All right. Hello, everyone. We're back. It's finally time to take on the main story, I think. Hang on. Let me let, let me just check around this map to see if we got any more side quests to go on. We do not. Excellent. How are you feeling, Joshua? Better than I was. But not nearly as well as you should be. Your cuts and burns may have healed, but your body still bears the burden of every spell cast. Then what would you have had me do? It was no ordinary foe we faced. It was the Warden of Darkness. Yet still, it was not enough. The King could have ended me at any moment, but instead chose to toy with me like a curl does a mouse. Yeah. You underestimate yourself. Oh, it was crystal clear. Only one man established his dominance that day, and that man was Barnabas. I'm sorry, brother. That was ill-spoken. It's just... I have never felt so powerless, and when so many are looking to us for strength, perhaps... Uh, perhaps the prince feels the same. Perhaps. Perhaps indeed. Crystalline Dominion. Nameless slum. Rude. this place <gasps> don't move It's fresh from the well. That's a huge cup. Well, I guess not so big when he's holding it. <laughs> That's what he said. Grandmother told me spirits sometimes get lost, and that the lanterns guide them to their proper place. I set one on the river for her when she passed away. Was it you who guided my hand then, Ultima? No, not you. This is my doing, my fault, my sin to bear. And for it, I must atone. Your hurts are healing nicely. It was my poultices that saw you well. You make them. And sell them, or try to. Earns me enough for bread, most days. Forgive me. I have nothing to... I know, but I couldn't just leave you lying there.
You're going then? Of course. I'm healed. Thanks to you and your poultices. Will you promise to come back and visit? Phoenix, it would seem that I owe you my wings. Kind of kind of funny that in FF14 there were two moons: the red moon, Dalamud, and <laughs> the blue moon. Perhaps he can find an answer. You will be returning to Walud soon, I gather. I see no reason to wait. Then neither do I. I can think of a few, but I doubt they'll stop you. You will take your medicine. Of course, Lady Tyre. Set on leaving already, are you? How long will it take us to get back to Ash? Dunno, about the same amount of time it took us to get here. Maybe less, if your uncle can find someone trustworthy to patch up the Enterprise. All depends on where we're putting into port, mind. Yes, it's not as if we can put ashore wherever we choose. We have to assume that the whole of Ash is hostile, and that we'll be attacked on sight. Then we must find a place they won't think to look. And I have an idea who might know of one. The Professor! I'll go and tell you come in! While you're plotting our course, I'll be in the shelves with your lawsman. I wish to pick his brains about Ultima. Then I'll talk to Karen about supplies for the journey. They may not be easy to come by in Ash. Well, at least the party members are doing something. Come with us, Taria. Heal. Use healing magic. Your brother's body won't take much more of this recklessness. You know that, don't you? I do. Speak to Vivian Ninetales. Ooh, there's new hunts available. Hang on a sec, guys. We may have to go do those. Depends on where they are, though. I think I know where some of these are. The Tricephalic, the Tricephalic Terror. A caravan of traders traversing the Valkyrie told me of a colossal beast they had encountered on their journey. To hear them tell it, it had the aspect of a dragon, a lion, and a scorpion all at once. I contested that it might be naught but a mirage, a phantasm brought about by the desert heat, but the sweat which ran down their foreheads was cold and the fear in their eyes real. Okay, so I actually know where that is and we are gonna go fight it. Um, this one will not appear if you haven't done the uh, if you haven't done the um, Blacksmith Blues quests, or found another Chimera out in the wild, um, somewhere. Uh, that does not include if you're replaying the game and run into the Chimeras they add in Ready, go. for hard mode. Run like the wind. How the hell did that boss get me, It has to be one that you find naturally through the story. Mini cat. There he is. And uh, the, the earliest chimera you can fight is the one in uh, Blacksmith Blue's quest line. As far as I know. Anyway, here you go. This fuck. Just like the one from Cutter's Cry, the Gorg Mira. That's right, Mira. You're a chimera. A chimera. We're not gonna run this one. Stay close, Tolbo. This one's very fond of its combo attack.
Shit. Okay, I, I can't do that if I know that attack's coming. Oh shit. Okay. You know, I've never in all my fights ever been hit by the uh, energy wave going in like that. I figured it was just an effect of the attack, not an actual, like, part of the attack. Delta Force. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you got the lion's voice immediately after you fought. Expecting another Ram's voice to appear. There it is. Can I get me? Oh, okay. Oh, this should actually kill him. Should. get to really use the command man we just launched finished him with the first tick of it it looks like but still he he did and there we go we got another orc alpha and we need one more maybe two more should have picked on someone your own size but absolutely worth doing that was uh that was an s rank one so there you go uh, there is another S rank coming up shortly that we, we we're gonna fight, but uh, we'll do that one later. Uh, well, we can only do that one later, but 
It's one that has actually killed me in the past, too. The sound of ringing still. Has filled the streets of Javaz. Back, since back before anyone can remember. And there's not a smith worth his salt who didn't prentice under one of the village's masters. The insulted worked old Vulcan's foundry till our lungs burned and our skin turned black. But we were happy. So we won. Things change. People change. And we can either change with them or we can stay stuck in the past. Me and my old mate have chosen to put our past behind us so that Javaz can have a future. A future where young smiths can be proud of the work done well and work done right. Just like here. Who knows? Maybe someday my apprentice will be someone else's master and work them just as hard as I do him. Right. What'd you want? Make the god damn wrong. We actually have all of the Auric Alchem that we need. Uh, now we need to get a primitive battle horn and a d two dark steel. Again, those are both going to be dropped by... Uh... Those are both going to be dropped by things that we uh, hunt. I think we can also make the Ouroboros, which we need one Auric Alchem for and a stone tongue. And... It's going to be a bit... Still alive, are ya? Indeed I am. She sounds disappointed. You'll not find a better price than that. Alright, let's go talk to Vivian Ninetales. I was wondering when you'd arrive. Please tell me you've come to take our young prodigy here off my hands. I'm not here for Mid. I need information on Ash. Then why not ask Molly if you can look in one of her ovens? <sighs> Go on. As soon as the Enterprise is ready, we'll be setting out for Drake's spine. And we're going to need a safe place to land. Preferably one that won't seem a ship blown to shit and splinters. If it were that easy, do you think Walud would have resisted invasion for so long? Very little is known of Ash, and the information we do have is spotty and outdated. We have the good King Barnabas to thank for that. Walud's borders have been closed to outsiders since the day he seized the throne. If there is anywhere safe to land, you won't find it on my map. And tell us what we will find. I'm sure you know better than we do. But no splinters! All right, all right, if it will get you out of my hair. But interrupt me, and it's over. Understood? Barnabas Tham, the one they call the last king. Understand him, and you will understand the kingdom of Walud. Barnabas was only a boy when he arrived from beyond the southern seas, and barely a man before he united the ragged tribes of Ash. And having unleashed them upon the formidable Veldemark, he set his throne upon the ancient kingdom's ruins. The victory sent shockwaves around Valisthea. Tales of Odin's might spreading through every court, parlor, and drinking hall in the realm. Note that this was in the year 843, and that the king still sits upon his throne some 40 years later, quite untouched by time. Walud's recent inaction left many wondering if Odin had lost his appetite for war. And yet here we are. The Einherjar was committed to the fray, a bold declaration of intent. Orcs swarm around Drake's Fang, and throngs of Akashic haunt Canvas streets. Though how precisely the havoc they wreak serves Walud remains unclear. Regardless, if the order to attack truly came from King Barnabas, then one thing is certain. Walud has achieved the impossible and made bedfellows of beastmen 
and the ether adult alike. All of which is a roundabout way of saying that you will be in unknown territory when you set foot on Ash. Much of the continent has already been lost to the Blight, and what few ports remain will be fiercely guarded. And that is to say north of its natural defenses. Offshore currents will cast an ill-equipped ship out to sea one moment, and dash it against the rocks the next. But then the Enterprise is anything but ill-equipped. And Mid has made land there before. Now, if only there were someone with an intimate knowledge of the Shadow Coast, and where a daring gentleman might put ashore. You see, Clive, you had the answer all along. Do you think you can get us back to that beach, Mid? Picked you up from it, didn't I? Not that it were easy. The currents were right, bastard. But then, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? Well said. Thank you, Lady Vivian. If a few morsels of common knowledge and a sprinkling of tavern talk are worthy of your thanks, I wonder what genuine intelligence might earn me. Probably more visits. Mid. I need everyone in the ale hall now. I'll fetch Joshua from the shelves. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, what do you want? My Lord Marquis. Okay, well, Mira, I can't... Ask about you, Ote. It was the greatest honor of my life. To be appointed protector of his grace. I have served him in that capacity since he first began his journey across Valisthea, the purpose of which was twofold. To further the undying knowledge of Ultima, and to further his grace's knowledge of you, my lord. After you learned of your survival, your brother insisted that we try to trace your movements. Thanks to the investigations of my fellow acolytes, we learned that you have taken the name of Sid. Now... Our journey together is at an end. His grace bids me remain here and protect those you and he hold dear. So I bid you. My lord, if I might be so bold, please look after him in my stead. Your companions are kind indeed. Everyone has been most welcoming. Lady Taya has been especially gracious, though I know something of the medicinal arts. It's hardly enough to warrant the acclaim of one so skillful. I must admit. At first I doubted her praise was sincere. We undying are trained in what few simple skills might serve us in the field, but there is certainly no praise for those who excel in such that endeavors. I see now. Hey, that is your way. You encourage each other, that each might lend their strength to the cause, no matter how seemingly slight their contribution. Phoenix, heal thyself. Yote, is anything the matter? You seem troubled. Perhaps I might be able to help. My lord. Y yes. Perhaps you might. It's your brother. His condition continues to worsen, though he does his best to hide it. The lesion on his chest pains him more with each passing day. I had feared as much. There are certain elixirs which can ease the suffering of those afflicted by the curse, but... But... But his grace's case is severe. The drafts I have been able to prepare for him thus far have ceased to have any real effect. So I consulted with Talia and certain of my comrades among the Undying about the possibility of finding something stronger. And thankfully, a recipe was found. The only problem being that the critical ingredient is exceptionally hard to come by. And our supplies are almost exhausted. Unless we can secure more soon, your brother's anguish will likely become unbearable. My lord, I know that I have no right to make demands of you. But would you help? 
For Joshua's sake. For Joshua? Anything? Thank you, my lord. So, what is this critical ingredient? A rare herb by the name of Stonerwort. It grows only where the ether is densest. The vigor it stores in its stems helps to counteract the curse. We discovered a patch near the aqueduct in Rosaria. But alas, yet more ether has erupted from the earth there recently, leaving the whole area flooded. The search continues for a new source. One that we might reach without being turned. So it's only that you can't reach it? The stone wart itself is unharmed by the flood? Well, yes, but... Then I shall go in your stead. Oh, but, my lord... You've yet to find another source, correct? So for now, the aqueduct is our best hope. Besides, I'm a dominant. The ether can't hurt me. Well, if you're sure, my lord, Stonerwort is easily identified by its blood-red blooms. Search around the aqueduct, and you're sure to find some soon enough. I shall remain here and prepare the other ingredients. Gotta get stone award from around the aqueducts. So this kind of thing is what um, annoyed a lot of players that I spoke to is that you'd get like this massive on surge of st side quests and like being people that want to do the side quests, you you do them because you like to flesh out the world. Then you're like, okay, finally time to go on with the main story, and then you do one tiny part of the main story, and then it's like a whole bunch of more side quests, like. Basic. Now the argument could be made, you just don't have to do the side quest, which is true. You don't have to, but... Yeah, that's like asking players not to engage in your game's world, right? Like, you want players to engage in the world. It's like right there. A lot of ether floods happening in this world now. Is the aqueduct? Which is insane considering the amount of blight in the world. No dimension, blood red petals. That's my luck. Anything till they're gone. Okay, so these are casters. I expect there to be a little more delay. I am playing terribly right now. I didn't mean to use that potion. Shit. I was trying to get Torbo to do you sick, but again, the game likes to swap over to my potion menu. Well, that's not true, actually. I probably didn't put it on the potion menu to uh, fight the uh, Chimera. Wow, what is going on? It's like I see the attack coming and I'm just not pushing the button.
Oh, it lived. Fair. But then immediately died. Yay, ten sharp fangs. Hurrah. FF16 loves its RPG trope of... Uh, Oh, the there's this great thing we can like make, but we're missing the key ingredient. Alright. That should do it. Let's get the They love it. Yote. I brought back all the stone and water I could find. Will this be enough? One of the few varieties of flora capable of resisting high concentrations of ether. This herb is most often found in and around ether flux, where the fauna that would feast on its nutrient, nutritious roots often fall prey to their akashic cousins if they don't turn themselves. Yes, my lord. Thank you. I'm sure it will serve us until we can find another source. I'm very glad to hear it. You and His Grace are very much alike, you know. You think only of how you might help others, and never of the danger to yourselves. No more than you have, minding my brother. You've risked a lot for him, and I thank you for it. I am honored that you should say so. But I beg you, my lord, do not give too much of yourself for the sake of others. We could not afford to lose you. I'll keep that in mind. Getting really close to 3,000. Okay. It is break time, and then once again, we are going to go on with the main story. At least until they give me more to do. Be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. We got more FF16 for you today.